Aquila Astronautics proposes building on site a metal, a titanium cube of side 15 meters, which will have rounded corners and edges to help it withstand the necessary pressure differential of 90 kilopascals. It will have a pressurized walkway leading to the main base, meaning no annoying spacesuits to put on every time you need to go outside, and it's almost entirely self-sufficient in the respect that its plant room means it provides almost all of the food that its inhabitants need and also cycles their atmosphere for them. In order to save cost, titanium should be produced from the abundant oil ammonite found on the moon as per the equation shown. The resulting sponge should then be washed with magnesium chloride and melted through an electric arc furnace. Titanium has been shown in submarines to withstand pressures of over 10 megapascals, which is plenty for our needs on the moon. Titanium foil should also be produced and hung in multiple layers in order to preserve heat through that would otherwise be lost through infrared radiation. Radiation levels on the moon are 300 times those of Earth. Temperatures are lethal at both extremes, and micrometeorites can be dangerous to both personnel and equipment. However, 350 meters of regolith provide ample protection against all three of these hazards, and the settlement can be heated by heaters or cooled by radiative heat exchangers as necessary. We aim to use this hydroponic array of fruit-bearing plants. It will provide oxygen to the people of the settlement, remove waste carbon dioxide, and it will also provide fruit for them to eat. Um, the calculation below uh, shows that, the, well, it assumes that the children will use as much oxygen as the adults, and this creates a slight excess which will negate the fact that the plants take in some oxygen themselves. Also, some of the essential nutrients include nitrogen-based compounds, and we will need to extract nitrogen from lunar dirt and concentrate it within the biome in order to ensure that we have enough to sustain the plant's growth. Um, the diagram here shows uh, the method used uh, to purify water on the space station itself, so we will follow their procedure. Um, to, because the process is not 100% efficient, we will need to extract extra water from the lunar regolith. We will do this by using a solar-powered microwave generator mounted on a roaming buggy, which will fire microwaves at the lunar surface, and um, ice will be thawed and it, and it can then be collected. Also, uh, there is solid waste, which is much more difficult to dispose of, so we will, attract what, we will extract whatever fertilizer we can from it, and the rest will be dumped in the crater. One remaining seeming problem is the long-term effect of one-sixth Earth gravity on lunar inhabitants. And we can see from data from the ISS that uh, anyone subject to less than one Earth gravity loses a lot of muscle mass and a lot of bone mass. But when you bear in mind that people living on the moon or in our lunar settlement will, uh, will live their, their entire life, they're actually accustomed to the weight of everything being one-sixth of what it would be on the Earth. So while everything would feel very light and uh, to an Earthlink, to anyone on the moon, uh, everything is totally normal and they can subsist exactly as a human being would on the Earth. 